If you have $5,000 in the bank right now, there are some things that you want to do with your money. That way, you can get the most bang for your buck. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Don't you wish that your paycheck would come with instructions on things that you can do with your money? That way, you can get the most value out of your money. Want to blow your money? Go here. Want to grow your money? Go there. And now, on top of that, we are in a day and age where saving your money doesn't have the same value as it did 10 years ago, or 20 years ago, or 50 years ago. Which is why it's more important now to be smart with your money than ever before. The first thing you gotta do is understand your savings and make sure you're getting the most value out of your savings. Unlike what you've probably been told your whole life, your savings are not there to make you wealthy. And they will not make you rich, okay? You cannot save your way to wealth anymore the way you could in previous generations because the value of our savings is being diluted by inflation. Now, this doesn't mean that you should not save any money. This means that you need to save your money the right way. What I need you to please understand is that your savings are not there anymore to make you wealthy. Your savings are there to protect you from a financial emergency. At the very bare minimum, you need to have at least $2,000 saved up in a savings account to protect you from an emergency. That way, if your car breaks down, your AC breaks down, your window breaks, you have some cash that you can fall back on. That way, you don't have to worry about going into debt. Once you've got the $2,000 saved up, then you want to create a goal for yourself to save somewhere between 3 months and 12 months worth of expenses in your savings accounts. You do not want to save less than 3 months worth of expenses and you don't want to save more than 12 months worth of expenses. And you want to be somewhere in that range depending on how kind of your risk tolerance is. If you have a high risk tolerance, then you don't need 12 months worth of expenses saved. Maybe you can get by only saving 3 months or 6 months worth of expenses. If you're kind of more conservative and you don't like taking out a lot of risk, then you might want to save a year's worth of expenses. So, if you take a look at your monthly expenses, your rent, your groceries, your utilities, your car payments, and everything else, and this costs you $4,000 a month, then at the very bare minimum, you want to have $12,000 saved up in a savings account. That's three months worth of expenses. And at the high end, you want to have 12 months worth of expenses, which is $48,000 in your savings account. So, this is money you want to put in your savings account that you do not touch unless you run into a financial emergency. By the way, Louis Vuitton having a sale is not an emergency. Besides, these savings that you're putting aside for an emergency, the only other reasons why you should be saving your money is to save money for a big purchase, like a down payment on a house or a car or saving your money for an investment. Let's say you want to invest in a rental property or you want to invest your money into the stock market, but you don't know where yet. Or you want to invest here somewhere else but you're just trying to accumulate some cash or you don't know where to put this money at, then it's okay to save your money. If you're saving your money for an emergency between the 3 to 12 month range, or you're saving your money for a big purchase, or you're saving your money for an investment, that's okay. But beyond those three things, you should not be saving any additional money. Your savings, like I said before, are not there to make you wealthy. Your savings are being diluted by inflation. So if you want to become wealthy, you want to make sure you're saving your money the right way. By the way, I should also mention that you may want to consider moving some of your savings to an online account because some online banks are going to pay you way more interest on your savings than a traditional bank will because online banks don't have the same overhead and the same fees as traditional banks. And so they have more money that they can pay you with more interest. 
The second thing you want to consider doing now that you have some cash in the bank is you want to start using some of your cash to pay down your debt. I always think it's so strange when somebody has a lot of cash in the bank but they also have credit card debt that they're paying interest on every single month. It doesn't make sense that the interest on credit cards are high. And besides that, I personally don't like the feeling of having something looming over my head. Think about this. If you put your money in the bank, your savings account is going to pay you somewhere in the range of 0.01% a year in interest to somewhere like 5% a year in interest if you're banking with an online bank. So your savings are paying you next to nothing. But if you have debt, and this can be any kind of debt from credit card debt to car loans to mortgage to your student loans. And you can make this comparison that we're about to make yourself with all the other types of consumer debt, but focusing on your credit card debt. The interest you will have to pay a year on your debt will range anywhere from 15 to 25 percent. So let's say 25 percent a year. So if you have debt, you're paying out 15 percent to 25 percent a year in interest on money that you're borrowing. But at the same time, when you're keeping money in the bank, it's paying you less than 5% a year. So now, if you have some savings in the bank that can protect you from an emergency, it makes sense for you to take some of these savings and use it to pay down this debt. That way, you don't have to pay this 15% to 25% a year in interest on your debt. The nice thing about paying your debt off early is you get a guaranteed return on your money. So when you go out and you invest your money, there's always a risk that you will lose money because investing has risks. You're not guaranteed to make money, but when you pay down your debt, you're getting a guaranteed return on your money. And it's funny because on YouTube and on other social media platforms, sometimes we talk about what would happen if you could grow your money by 8% a year or by 10% a year. And we always get comments from people saying things like, Wow, that's not possible. Where in the world could I get an 8% return a year? But at the same time, your credit card company is making 18, 20, 25% a year. Every single year in interest when you carry credit card debt. Now, if you have this credit card debt and you have extra cash in the bank, you want to take this cash that's earning you nothing and use it to pay down this high interest debt because this high interest debt is making your credit card company extremely wealthy. This is the reason why so many credit card companies are rolling around in cash because people are buying things they don't need that they cannot afford with money that's not theirs at 20 to 25% a year in interest. And then they're keeping their extra cash in the bank that's paying them nothing. So once you have some savings, I want you to take your extra cash and I want you to use it to pay down your high interest debt, like your credit card debt, because this debt is skinning you alive. Now, if you have a low interest debt, something like a mortgage or student loans, it's not as urgent for you to take all of your extra savings and pay down your debt as fast as possible because now, it might be more beneficial for you to invest your money if you can handle the higher risk because maybe you can get a better return there. But again, if you don't like taking on risk and you have extra cash in the bank, then use it to pay down your debt because now you're getting guaranteed return on your money when you pay it down. While with your savings in comparison, you're getting next to nothing. Now, on the flip side of this, to avoid this issue happening ever again, we want you now that you have cash in the bank to stop financing things completely. Financing things that you don't need, that don't pay you with money, that's not yours is the number one reason why the majority of people are broke. And well, that's why we're master wealth because we don't want you to think like the majority of people. We want you to master wealth. If it doesn't put money in your pocket, stop financing it. The only exception to this is your house. But now, if you have the savings in your bank account, you can use some of this money to pay down your debt. 
so you can keep your future money in your pocket. If you enjoyed this video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and as always, remember, financial freedom starts with an adaptable mindset. See you in the next video. Cheers!